they've been following the Unity Rollerball tutorial as kind of a guideline. Uh, and now we're going to depart from there a little bit because they publish to the web. We're going to publish to Android. And that's one of the cool things about this engine is that you can do that without having to pay a bunch of money to publish your game to a mobile platform. So that's what we're going to do. Now, up till now, we've been using the keyboard to control the player. Uh, that's a little inconvenient for mobile. So what we'll do now is do some mouse support so that that uh, translates into uh, touchscreen support for the mobile device. It's just a little bit more uh, work, but it's not that much. So let's get to it. So I'm going to go over here to our player and the script. We're going to modify the script one more time. And I'm going to grab some code from our cheat sheet. And all we want to do is uh, keep track of how wide the screen is, how tall the screen is, um, some helper constants uh, to help us index into um, some arrays such that 0 is x and 1 is y. And then we're going to come down and say when our player enters the scene tree, we want to uh, go and grab the camera by name, get a handle to it. Once we have the camera, we can uh, get the viewport and ask the viewport how big its rectangle is. Once we have that rectangle, we can say uh, what is its width and what is its height. And then we can use that information over in get access if you recall get access uh, uh, get access is about uh, it returns a float that's between a negative one and one that value represents the user's uh, request to move uh, uh, on on the horizontal or vertical axis uh, to the left to the right or up or down and so what we're going to do is say, hey, uh, let's look at the mouse. Is the button pressed, uh, i.e. is the finger pressing the touch screen? If it is, then let's grab the position of the mouse or the fingertip relative to screen space. And once we have that position, we will use that uh, to calculate um, one. Uh, we'll use the max width to calculate the center of the screen on the x-axis and then we'll uh, grab the x position relative to that and then we'll grab the center of y and the position on y and we'll use those values to calculate how far away the click is from the center so we calculated the center and so now we know uh, the position is some distance away from the center and that is some percentage of the um, of the way to the edge of the screen and that is going to map from negative one to one and it'll be zero when it's exactly in the center of the screen so um, so that's what we're going to do for get access and once we have uh, that going on it's a simple matter of uh, starting our game and clicking in the window and if we click diagonally we get diagonal movement if we're far left that's one, that's negative one. On the uh, horizontal, that's uh, uh, one on the vertical and negative one on the vertical, and we're good to go. So uh, all is well, our mouse is working, so we've got a good interface when we go to the mobile world. Um, now it's just a matter of exporting to uh, Android platform. And the Go engine makes that very simple. If you look here between the, the square and this um, uh, play scene button, there's going to be a button that appears. As soon as I plug my USB cable into my phone, and so I will do that. And the moment I do that right now, it is going to detect that I've plugged my phone into the computer and I get a brand new button with a little Android logo and if I press that button it detects that my Google Nexus 4 is connected to my machine I click that button 
and now all I've got to do is wait for my package to get built and it'll install the previous package start installing the new one and as soon as it's done doing that it will appear on my phone without me having to pay fifteen hundred dollars to unity and bam there it is on my phone all right so we made a whole game we published it to an android device and we're done i will attempt to uh put this entire project as well as uh, the notes that i've been copying from and the primitive objects into an archive and then i'll put that on the on the net somewhere and i'll point this video at that and so folks that are interested in duplicating this can can do that and follow along